how I've always found it kind of amazing, honestly, like that a product manufacturer does not have a video about the product. Like, you know, I mean, even back seven years ago, like, how is that possible? Hello and welcome to another episode of White Label Advice. My name is Brooke McNeely. I am the VP of Marketing here at White Spider, and I am joined today by our founder, Eric Howerton. I, I have to make sure I introduce him first or else Thank he you. gets Get jealous. jealous. Yes. And then we also have our esteemed guest who is joining us from Brooklyn, New York. His name is Corey Hammond and he is our VT, VP of product development. And Corey, why don't you t um, introduce yourself and tell us a little about yourself? Yeah, sure thing. Um, so like Brooke said, my name is Corey Hammond, VP of product development slash strategy. Really where my focus lies is in product uh, roadmap management and understanding where our business needs to head uh, to meet the needs of customers. And really where our focus has been more recently is product development that doesn't just complement the White Spider platform, but also essential as a larger business. So plenty of opportunity for us to collaborate with all our sister companies since being acquired by Essential. Uh, but I'm happy to you know, sort of just talk about anything you guys are interested in uh, when it comes to product and uh, anything, especially about rich media on the walmart.com side. That's great. Thank you, Corey. And not only are you a product uh, extraordinaire here at White Spider, but you were also a former Walmart merchant. So that kind of gives you a little bit more insight on how things are done on the Walmart side. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah. Yeah. So I was over at Walmart for a little over two years. Uh, I worked out of the Jet.com offices over in Hoboken, New Jersey. So my focus was a combination of Jet.com and Walmart.com. And during that time, I was in this world of category merchants or category specialists, as they called them. And my role really was to go very deep on a category and manage the PL for that business within Walmart.com. So, really, what I learned was everything from item setup, content optimization, forecasting. Uh, even getting the right inventory into the right warehouse throughout the year and helping our vendors succeed on walmart.com. And right after leaving walmart.com, I actually started my own business that was called .com Partners. And our big focus was to help vendors succeed on walmart.com. And a big part to it was content optimization. And we were looking at rich media and enhanced content, figuring out ways in which we can grow our uh, presence on walmart.com with our vendors listings. And conveniently, Skew Ninja was offering rich media. And so we naturally started working with you guys. And, you know, 18 months later, we're now merged with White Spider, which is now owned by Essential. And it's just been a match made in heaven where we're able to continue the work that we've done with our clients, but uh, really influence the products that we're building today. So, hey, Corey, whenever you were a merchant at Walmart, did you see that uh, Rich Mini was important for your supplier's catalog? You did? Yeah. Can you go in more detail about that? And just kind of like your experience without obviously divulging any, you know, anything that yeah, Walmart of course. Would, would but it'd be kind of <laughs> neat to know from a merchant perspective, like how 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 a buyer thinks about rich media. You know, what's what's more the important assets? Why they care? Uh, what they're trying to accomplish when they're asking or they're wanting that on product pages? Yeah, it's a great question. So when I first started at Walmart, I approached everything from a very analytical perspective and started looking at traffic numbers and conversion data. And I noticed a really clear uh, correlation between having rich media on your PDP, your product page, and seeing an increase in conversion. And also nowadays, what's really important is showing up organically. So now that Walmart Connect has such a strong presence in search results, 
if you can get there organically and not have to pay for that spot, you're saving so much money uh, by doing so. And so while I was a merchant, the vendors I was working with strategically, one of the first things I always told them to do was invest in rich media and invest in content that sets your product page apart from not just what's on walmart.com, but also what is across e-commerce. So Amazon listings, they have plenty of really great content, but figure out ways to differentiate yourself on walmart.com, whether that's an item that's sold in Walmart stores, how can you make that really obvious to a customer through rich media? And even more specifically, looking at just the video uh, module, how can you use that to better educate customers above the fold? You know, one thing that's always kind of like struck me is like, I don't, it's, I always found it hard to, to understand, like if I was a product manufacturer, how I don't have any videos. <laughs> You're not yeah. even on, Brooke. Oh, I turned my mic off. No. <laughs> Hold on. So, I turned my mic the person with technical difficulty oh, is the one causing all these problems. I'm sorry, I was Corey. Three. Brooke, Brooke, now you turn. Well, no, that's good. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, sorry, Corey. Brooke just almost ruined the entire podcast. <laughs> no worries. But let me go ahead. And sorry, Anna. <laughs> He's our editor. He does a great job. Oh, I got you. So, yeah, but I've always been. I don't, whose interview is this? Like, it's mine. It's yours now. All right, I'm just <laughs> no, here. Just kidding. Yeah. No, it's yours, Brooke. <laughs> Thank you. Sorry. I was just thinking. Um, so Corey. <laughs> Hold on, I said something though. You did say something. Did you not want to talk about what I said about? I don't like, remember. I don't understand. Like, if I, uh, how pro- I'll restate it. Oh, thank you. How I've always found it kind of amazing, honestly. Like that, a product manufacturer does not have a video about the product. Like, you know, I mean, even back seven years ago, like, how is that possible? I mean, I'm not dogging anybody, but I mean, it's just like, there's not a great, like if, if okay, if I'm making, Corey, are you with me still? Or did you drop off the line? Because I'm, I'm, wanting to, I'm going, kind of going on a rampage. I'm letting you finish, finish your, your deep thought. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Here's your soapbox. You. Here you go. Yeah. So like if, if I was creating these sunglasses that I got right here, right? Why would I not, after investing all this, and, I, and, and, I, and, I, and you come by and you want these pairs of sunglasses? It'd be like you come by and say, hey, I like these sunglasses, and I just go, you just, you just I just look you at just you. Look at, look I don't say anything. You just show I don't me take images you, and what costs no, and a button. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just point. Yeah, but I mean, like, it's like a fundamental thing, like in sales. Like, I mean, you'd be, you go back to the 1700s or wherever. I mean, 1700s? People, 17, 1600s. They had video even, back then. Even before then. Even before, movement, like, even before the moving like, pictures. Like one of the most fundamental things about selling a, a product is to explain it. And whenever you have the opportunity in the internet's world to explain your product with a video, I mean, you're hitting the audio, the visual, you know, you can control the script. I mean, you can go into the details. I mean, I just don't understand I've never understood that. I'm not, again, I'm not dogging anybody. But I really honestly think, Corey, maybe you agree. And I mean, I'm sorry, Brooke, not trying to cut you out of the entire podcast. It's okay. but, but I think that, like, it's not as much about the manufacturers not having a video. It's that they're not posting it. Like, like they don't, like, it doesn't get done. Am I right? So I, I think it's a matter of priorities for manufacturers. Um their job right. is to churn out as many units as possible. And right. they're focusing on things that will help them increase their top line revenue. Now, when it gets out of the manufacturer's hands, it's those that are responsible, responsible for hitting sales targets, for hitting um, the forecasts that not just Walmart.com expects them to hit, but any other e-commerce channel that they're listing their item on. And so I think the biggest issue that we've faced up till now, and maybe even now, is that responsibility hasn't necessarily been uh, solidified in the e-commerce industry. And so as, as software providers, we're helping every single one of our clients get over this hump of 
where do I post it? How do I manage my content? Uh, how do I get it across all of my products easily? The biggest issue now is who's going to be responsible for creating that content? And is that content actually relevant to the customer on walmart.com? Mm -hmm. That's exciting. Well, I know that videos have actually not been on walmart.com for a little while, probably since September 15th. And uh, uh, they, Walmart just announced that, the, that they are coming back. And Corey, why is this a big deal? <laughs> it's pretty um, obvious why video needs to be on Walmart, walmart.com PDPs. Amazon has them uh, natively. And with Walmart removing it, I think it was more of a technical thing. Uh, they knew uh, back in September, maybe video wasn't fully compatible with uh, project class and launching the new walmart.com website. And so they had to spend the, these past six months really making sure video was a scalable uh, module in the new walmart.com. And so to answer your question, Brooke, of you know why is it an important piece? Well, it's one of the very few additional modules that you can have above the fold on a PDP. So when you're thinking as a vendor, what do I need to be investing in? You should be investing in really first anything above the fold. So your title, any like feature callouts, secondary imagery. But now that you have access to video, you better be jumping on that as an opportunity at the end of this month. So yeah, it's it's going to be live fairly soon um, and our systems are, are ready to, to meet that demand. Yes, we are excited. Are you excited, Eric? Yes, I'm very excited. Thank you, Brooke. <laughs> I am so excited. We are excited. Actually, we, we really are because we know that 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 videos, they, they, they are there for the shopper and they help the shopper, you know, buy the product. And so what are some of the other uh, benefits of having them on, on item pages? Eric, why don't you go are first? You, are you asking me? Yeah, Eric. So, uh, I mean, I, I agree with everything Corey's saying. I mean, it's kind of like what I was saying earlier, unless it got cut out. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> it cut all unless you cut it all out, <laughs> my first statement. But, I mean, you know, I think that videos are just an obvious, strong asset. I mean, it's like, you, how can you create a, a, a more powerful, meaningful, in-depth, you know, asset, digital asset, or any kind of marketing asset, that can better explain a product than a video. I mean, you can't try one, say something, you know, I mean, yeah, a website or something, but right. But I mean, like just a single type of asset that you could focus on that could really go into the depths of a product. And we've often uh, stated that it's even better than like an in physical uh, experience. You know, I mean, you can't open up a package a lot of times at a store. I mean, even though you might, I mean, I think, uh, Heard about Corey like digging into some Wheaties in yeah. the uh, breakfast aisle. I've done that. Why well, tried out some of when the, he was a baby? Yeah, it, he wanted that his checks and he wanted it right there and then and there. So you did that? And did I you opened, put them back I, on the shelf? No, no, I, I bought it. Oh. but you know. So my point was is like, oh, you, you just want, take a handful and you put. Well, it you back just on wanted the shelf. to see how big that checks uh, that that checks was, right? Just a single one. Just open then it you up. Put it back you, but you can do that. In a, but you can do that in a video. You mm -hmm. can open up the entire experience and even put people into. Anyway, we all know what a video is, but I think that that's probably, you know, one of the more exciting things about Walmart, just allowing that type of rich media. And it's one of the first ones that they allow back in, you know, so um, I think it's necessary to continue to tell that, tell that story, that product. Mm -hmm. Corey? No, I mean, the only other thing I'll add is it, a video doesn't have to necessarily be about the product. It can also be about the brand. About the what? what What'd you say about the brand? About the yes. Because yeah. the brand messaging, especially in the walmart.com space, we see that walmart.com customers really do lean towards a brand that they're familiar with. And so if you can have a video that shows a customer that you're not just selling another product, but you're selling them a brand that they can be proud to purchase, that's going to make a huge difference in conversion rates. So really think about not just the content for videos that you have for that product, 
But think about the brand videos that you've made over the years. See if you can push some of those videos onto a PDP uh, immediately when, when video comes back on walmart.com. Yeah, because that's really true. Like, like uh, from a SKU Ninja standpoint, Corey, I mean, you know, I know that you and the team have worked really hard to just try to make that experience super flawless, right? Uh, to where they can just take existing video assets and being able to get it. I mean, is that, I mean, tell us a little bit about what, from a product perspective on the, our side, on the SKU Ninja side, what are you trying to achieve with that video uploader? Yeah, so... Like I said, when, when you have a brand video, it doesn't just apply to one product. It applies to several, if not your entire catalog on walmart.com. And so from a development standpoint, what we've done is make it very, very easy for you to upload a video and select multiple products that you want that video to live on. So the process is super simple you can get video onto all your product pages probably within five ten minutes and if you compare that to some of the stuff we've been told exists on the amazon side of how many clicks and windows you have to open for uh, getting video onto amazon.com listings um, you'd be very pleased with with the way we've built our our system to upload and manage video content it's awesome. It is. It's super easy. I've used it. It's great. Uh, also, one of the questions that I have is, Eric, is there such a thing as too many videos on a product page? I don't believe so. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, because the, like, the videos aren't hosted on Walmart.com, so it's not like you're going to put too many on there and like load time isn't going is, is gonna to be slow. I don't think so. Corey might be better to answer that, but yeah, I don't, they're not hosted within their, you know, that, that page's uh, environment. So Just load it up. Just yeah, you just load it up and you just tell your story more. But I, I don't know, Corey, is in there a limit on the number of videos that you can put on? Yeah, it, there certainly is a limit. Um, I haven't experimented to try uploading two hundred videos into a single product page, um, but you know, <laughs> maybe that's maybe that's our next case study over at White Spider. We'll uh, see if we can break a PDP with videos. Are there too many videos on this page? Yeah, yeah. So that's that's really exciting. Um, one of the things that we wanted to talk about is what types of videos are the most effective? Is it, is it the brand video? Is it the, is it the product video? Is it some, something, a com combination of the two, you know, what, what, what works the best? What have we seen that is, um, the most, that is the best at converting shoppers? So I, I think from, from my perspective, it, you first have to ask yourself, what is the product type and what is the category? of the product that, that you want to put a video on or make a video for, um, that really will determine if you go the brand route, do you go the uh, unboxing route? So I always look at YouTube as a really good space to get inspiration on product uh, reviews. So, you know, the funniest thing is when people open an iPhone box and that video gets millions of views and you think, you know, what's the, what's the specialty or like what, what's the beauty of an iPhone uh, unboxing? And if you watch enough of them, you start realizing that the way Apple has designed their box and the packaging is almost exactly for that purpose of unboxing videos because of how simple they make it to open and how pleasing it is to watch that unopening. Um, those are things that you would want customers to see on your PDP. So if you have really great packaging and it looks real pretty and you wanna, uh, you wanna evoke that uh, beauty onto your PDP, something that a customer can't pick up and hold the product themselves, have there be a video of an unboxing, talking through all the products, all the um, items that are inside that box. If your product is more of a functional tool, uh, such as a drill, Unboxing a drill is not that exciting or, or pretty. So might as well get straight to the use cases of that drill and showing uh, the product in action. So 
it really depends on the category and the product that you're trying to make the content for. But the key thing to remember is you want to try to make content that you can replicate or, or more so uh, reuse on other product pages. So keep in mind that the more specific you get with a product video for a specific PDP, the less likely you're able to use all of that investment on another PDP. So you have to be really confident that your return on investment for that specific item is worth your time and money. Uh, it better be a product that's sold in Walmart stores and you might even have a QR code available in a Walmart store so that it's really generating the views that you need to see that conversion and revenue roll in. So Corey, you said something earlier on about going to YouTube. I think that's a great bit of direction for suppliers. I bet you brands might be really surprised, you know, if they just go simply Google or YouTube search their brand and their product, that specific product. Like you can even put in product part, you know, or the model numbers or whatever. Um, and they might be really shocked about what they see as far as like ideas, you know, and if you look for the ones that have the most, well, look for the ones with the most views, yeah, that's the most one views people are and yeah. finding the most knowledgeable, right. Or informative or, or making the most comments too. I mean, if nothing else, it'll give you ideas to, of, of directions that you should go for that particular product on putting on Walmart. The other <laughs> thing is I'll put in a nice little plug for skew ninja. Uh, the, again, the under you for those that are subscribed to elite. But the underutilized, what I believe underutilized, top shopper questions. I mean, mm -hmm. it's just like, there's your money. You know, I've always said that's like your editorial calendar. I mean, if you get those top shopper questions for that product type, you know, like you're mentioning, Corey, and you got 20 videos, you know, or questions coming from, you know, shoppers that have been pulled into Google, you know, that's your, that's your direction for a video calendar. I mean, if you just started knocking those out, you'd be doing great. All right. Well, thank you, everybody, for being here. And, Corey, I always like to ask Eric if he has any parting words or else he'll just do it anyway after I've said That's we're true. Done. Yeah, I would, I would uh, continue on the podcast because I don't feel like it's complete. Until, until, until we have parting words from Eric Howerton. That's right. Yeah. So, no, I think that uh, I, th I think we did a good job, Brooke, covering everything. And, I mean, there's not much more to talk about on the video side of yeah, things. Yeah, it's, it's, there's, there's moving pictures. Well, I'll tell you what, here's a good convert. question. Here's a good question. Okay, so folks that are on, manufacturers that are on a budget, mm -hmm. right? And they're trying to crank, say they had, they did do the Top Shopper questions, or they did what Corey said, going on YouTube. And they got 10 videos that they're looking at. And we've actually had manufacturers look at this. Mm -hmm. What's a great, efficient effective economical way that they can go attack that and brooke being the expert in videography that you are i mean do you got any tips i mean just real quick like uh, what are three tips for folks that want to do 15 videos in two weeks in two weeks what a question do you wow. like that question Corey? <laughs> that's a good one <laughs> yeah thank you yeah 15 videos in two weeks three tips three tips for 15 videos in two weeks my tips would be have good audio because people forgive right. bad video but they won't forgive bad audio so invest in the mics first and then you can use cell phones for your for um the filming they can they they work just great so you don't need to spend a lot of money on a camera you need to spend a lot you know, i would focus on the audio good tip i tip would number two. Tip number two is um, have it planned. <laughs> well, pre-production, you know, okay. plan it out. You need to have everything. If you're going to knock out a whole bunch of stuff in, in, in one thing, you know, you want to be able to have it have it ironed out, have, have your plan, have your outlines, have exactly everything that you want done, all your talent, all your, if you're going to do hair and makeup, just kind of have it all planned out. And then tip number three would be get a good editor. Don't okay. worry about editing it yourself. Finds that's there you where go. you put don't, your money. Don't be trying to bust open some Garage Band or iMovie. No, not no. Garage Band, iMovie. Or iMovie, something. yeah. You don't need i, yeah. Hire or an try editor. to go into YouTube Studio and yeah, try, no. yeah, don't hire an editor. Okay, those are some good tips, Corey. You. Don't you like that, man? I think that was really that was really helpful. I bet somebody will get a lot out of that. Thank okay. you, Brooke. No problem. Yeah. Anytime. <laughs> All right. All right. Well, thank you, Corey. And do you have any parting words? Yeah. No, I think uh, I think you guys nailed it. Um, yeah, make make sure your videos are modular and and can be scaled across multiple PDPs if possible. That's but, a good uh, one. That's a good one. Yeah. 
That's a good yeah. one. So modular, you mean like... Do more with less. Like the whole category of it. Got you. So if I have a brand... You've got an intro song to this podcast. Imagine if you had to play it live. Play it live every single time. <laughs> That's a lot of work. We'd have to hire mm-hmm. Chris. Although playing it live Chris sounds pretty cool. That's pretty cool. <laughs> It'd be fun. Good idea, Corey. No, I like that, that scalability of your videos, which is another wonderful thing about about the, the being able to put videos to explain the product. You can scale it across multiple PDPs. And, you know, the, one last thing, sorry. Retailer-specific is not such a big deal here, right? Like, Corey Brooke, when we talk, you know, to suppliers, mm-hmm. like, we're always saying you have to have Walmart-specific content. Now, if, if, if I was doing 20 videos... I would probably want to do five of those 20 specifically dedicated to Walmart, especially if it's one of my biggest clients, which a lot of times it is. <laughs> but then I'd like to be able to take those other 15 and be able to cast them through my own pro- personal properties as a brand to, you know, to other retailers, right. Amazon or whoever, not Amazon. Yep. Yep. Videos make, make them where they can go. They have multi, multi yeah. purpose. Yeah. So you can scale it out. Yep. So, I think right. that's, not, that's a good, a good one. Okay, all right. And we'll end on that. Thanks, Thank you, bro. Corey. We really appreciate you being here, and we will ho- hopefully have you in person in the studio next week. Yeah, appreciate it, Corey. I'm not excited to uh, to talk more with you guys in person, but uh, appreciate the the opportunity to talk with you about video and rich media and everything we're up to at Skew Ninja. Awesome, right. man. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Bye.